everybody. Hope everybody's having an outstanding time here at the conference. My name is Tal Starrett, I'm the Director of Solutions at Simparis, and I'm very excited and honored to be here with you today. So at Simparis, we're all about cybersecurity and cyber identities, and if Active Directory is not secure, nothing's secure, especially in today's federated world of hybrid identities, zero logon, and of course, you know, we're connecting into everything, Azure, AWS, Ping, Okta, and Active Directory, I can tell you after 15 years at Microsoft, I've seen Active Directory been deployed in a plethora of ways and also misconfigured in, in as many ways. So Mandian says that 90% of the attacks pretty much involve Active Directory in different layers. So persistence techniques, escalation of privileges, lateral movement, defense evasion. So all these happen in the Active Directory as part of any kill chain. So today, in the next few minutes, I'm going to take you through a real live attack that we were involved with a few weeks ago. Uh, the story starts as every great thriller. It was a Friday afternoon, and a, a partner called us in EMEA saying that they have a critical infrastructure customer in the Middle East that were compromised. So they were in the middle of an EDR uh, deployment project, and they were deploying EDR, and they found that there was malware on the domain controllers, but there were also many, many holes within the Active Directory. So they called us in, and I know what some of you are probably thinking, you know, how come these things always happen on a Friday afternoon? I don't know, I see you're smiling, you know what I mean. So I'm gonna take you through what we did. We'll go through this pretty quickly. So the first thing we did, and luckily the Active Directory was up and running. And we didn't know if the Active Directory was going to be up the next day or even in the next hour. So the first thing that we did is we created a safety net. And the way that we did that was that we used our product called ADFR, the Active Directory Forest Recovery Tool, which actually takes a backup of the Active Directory, but it does a few additional steps. So we just wanted to have our Active Directory ready as a safety net, and I'll talk about the, how we went about it. So if you see over here in the red boxes, traditional backups, usually what they do is they take a system state backup or a bare metal recovery backup. And over here in the, the operating system, you have any persistence techniques. So things like rootkits, backdoors, all kinds of malware, OS resident malware, encryptors are sitting here in the operating system. So the way that we do this is that we decouple the active directory from the actual operating system. So when we recover, we create a brand new, clean, pristine, operating system. In addition, what we do is we quarantine anything sitting in group policy. So you're probably familiar about ransomware attacks like the Ryuk ransomware, where people inject encryptors into login scripts, startup scripts, things like that. So we quarantine that so it doesn't happen. In addition, we adhere to the Microsoft Forest Recovery Guidance, so we rotate the Kerberos tickets twice for golden ticket attacks, and that was something that we identified on that system. We invalidate the RID pools, all kinds of technical things that we do in order to refresh the forest. So now that we had this active directory as a safety net, we continued on. And we came to a decision point where we always try to recover the active directory, the live active directory, because again, this was a critical infrastructure client. They continued to give service to their customers, and they didn't want to go down. So when we do this analysis, we're always looking for three main things. We're looking for how did the bad actors get in, how did they compromise the AD, how did they get the domain credentials. We're looking for any additional exposures, how else can they get in, and then we're looking for back doors. So when we're fighting back, what can they use to regain access? So we used a few tools. One of the tools you might have heard at or seen here at the Expo is our Purple Knight. It's a free tool, readily available, that you can run on any Active Directory as many times as you want. It'll give you a nice background of all the exposures. So at, at a high level, we look for baseline security, security posture. We look for, best, again, best practices. Then we look for exposures in the system, anonymous access, GPO linking, reversible passwords, things like that. And then we look for actual compromise. We also use additional tools, manual checks, scripts, just a whole plethora of things. Here you can see like a sample example. This is not, of course, from the, from the client, but just different things that we're scanning for in the system. This is the type of report that you get. And then I'm just going to highlight one thing here at the bottom. Users with SPNs defined, because this is a, something that we did find within this customer. So a 
administrative accounts actually had SPNs defined, and this is a, a nice curb roasting uh, target. So if you're familiar with curb roasting, it's a way to pretty much re-engineer the password by cracking the hashes. So it's an easy target. This was uh, defined on the system, so we went to work. A few other things that we found in, in this type of attack, one of the things was that all domain computers were able to define any type of certificate in the system. So any type of authentication certificate. That's already not a good situation. In addition, we found a help desk account that had the ability to reset any password on the system for any domain account, any domain administrator account, enterprise admins, and things like that. So that doesn't look like it's, it's, you know, it's okay, it's an account, it's not a group, not a very big issue, but they gave everyone access to that help desk account. So you, if you think about it, everybody could reset the help desk account that could reset the domain admins account. So pretty much self-service for the entire organization, which is not a good thing. In addition, we found multiple attackers on the system, different footprints. So this is interesting because the system is being attacked from different directions by f at least four different actors. Could be nation state or not, but they're attacking the system live. And we found that there were a few different stages in the, in the kill chain. So some already had domain admin accounts, and then some were still doing password spray attacks on the system. So pretty much this is like changing the wheel as you're driving, right? The wheels, but you have four different attackers that are shooting the wheels as you're trying to change them on an ongoing basis. So we decided to divide and conquer. The EDR team said, okay, we're going to continue to, to, to deploy the EDRs on the servers, uh, try and find and neutralize the command and control centers, and we went to work on the Active Directory. Because although we refreshed the curb rows tickets and we took care of anything that's sitting in the operating system, there's still a lot to do in the actual Active Directory. So we went to work on it. We had a day and a half of hardening. So we did some interesting things like a tiering model. So this is very highly recommended. They didn't have any tiering. All the domain admins were logging into their mail onto the regular workstations. So created tiers for domain accounts, for server accounts, for workstation accounts, and all that was brand new. We created brand new accounts. We uh, used the Microsoft Protected User Group. We took care of all those SPNs for the curb roasting targets, OU permissions, GP updations, just a whole plethora of things to harden the Active Directory. And then we had a decision to make. So this, again, this is a critical infrastructure organization. They're running, they're being attacked. And now we waited for the weekend to actually do something like a heart transplant. Imagine you're taking your heart of the organization, you're, you're taking it outside, you're working on it, you're hardening it, and then you're going to re-transplant it back into the system, into a live system, which is pretty cool if you think about it. So what we did, we took that decision, we took down all the computers, we, took, um, we redirected all the VLANs, all the IP addresses, we brought everything back, we hit the big red button, we brought everything back in 30 minutes. So instead of losing who knows what weeks or, or months or whatever it was, days, 30 minutes, we transplanted the Active Directory back into the organization. ADFR took, again, it did the Kerberos tickets, the RID pools, changed the replication epochs, all that good stuff in Active Directory. The EDR team took care of at least 20 command and control systems, blocked hundreds of IP addresses. We rebooted all the servers and clients, and that gave us uh, the ability to neutralize anything that was sitting in memory in an elevated process, and it also reconnected the secure channels back to the Active Directory, which is also super, super cool. So, the result was function, a fully functional and safe Active Directory, no more privileged, privileged accounts for curb roasting. AAD, I didn't mention it, but they had AAD path through, path through, pass through for Azure Active Directory. That works seamlessly. And I'm happy to say that the customer is up and running. They're not owned anymore. And the heart transplant was a success. So I want to thank you for your time for these few minutes. I look forward to meeting everybody. I hope you have a great conference. And I invite you over to, for coffee to our uh, ex exhibition uh, expo or over here at the expo. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Enjoy the conference.